Hello, one and all, and welcome to a farming edition of the Brewing Labs. Now, for the record, I did not make this deck that I'm featuring off. This is actually a deck that was made by a content creator by the name of Rats Real IK. I'm going to provide the deck link as well as their Twitch uh, link down below. They're a streamer of MTG Arena and such. And this deck they made is actually a really fun deck that went 28-8 and eight is their record with the deck. Now, for example, what is the main gimmick of this deck? Well, as we stated before with the farming and all that stuff, it's a deck brewed around Colossal Plow. A two-mana artifact vehicle sits three whenever this attacks, add free white, and gain free life until in a turn you don't lose this mana steps and phases in. Now, the gimmick that most people would want to do with this card is mostly just to use the giant ox to crew it and such. You know, stuff like that. But, as you can see with the deck below, we actually have a lot of very powerful creatures already in the meta that are able to crew this mighty ox, to put it for lack of a better word. So, with that, we have stuff like Kroza, Titans of Death Hunger, as well as Egon, God of Death, and even some buffed up creatures that using Showdown of the Scald, specifically. We also are running some Giant Killers to help kill some very problematic creatures in the format. We have Blood Cheese first, same thing applies. I would m mostly want to go like a free-free with this, but a 4-2 is actually great. One, Duress is very nice, especially against the very control-oriented decks in the format. We have free Valky God of the Lies in here. Now, clarification, uh... Rats actually had four in his list, but I wanted to take one of them out just to throw in one Kaya, since I think Kaya kind of works for the list. Especially since we have a lot of legendary cards such as Redon, Egon, Valky himself, as well as Kroza, Titans of Death's Hunger. So I figured that if we can both protect our creatures, like for example protect Egon so that if it gets sacked it just returns to our hand, so then we can replay it again, the crew, the ox, essentially crew the Colossal Plow and do more fun shenanigans along that line. It's mostly an experiment in the deck. That's one little altercation I did. But besides that, the list pretty much the same. We also run the Elspeth's Nightmare, just a good hand disruption slash removal. Tyramet Calls the Dead, nice way to f pretty much throw cards into our graveyard, the Fool Kroza, as well as just essentially be able to, if we can get to the third step with some zombies on the board, be able to scry Ets where Ets is the number of zombies you control. Bone Crusher Giant, just your typical early game removal, stomp anything that you need to stomp, as well as get a 4 free out of it. Very popular removal in the format for an obvious reason. We also have Showdown of the Scalds, great card draw engine in a mid-range deck like this essentially, helps us draw 4 cards essentially, and then allows us to grow our creatures whenever we cast spells, which then can help make like Bone Crusher Giant or even a buffed up zombie be able to crew the plow. Now, what a really nifty trick the deck that I think was very clever for Rats Real IK to actually do here. And the basic premise would how he crewed the plow essentially is you can have the plow out, play Kroza. Kroza would technically die once it ETBs if you don't escape with it. But before the escape trick before the sacrifice trigger activates, you can actually crew at instant speed. So you can do a as Early as a turn for the attacking with the plow, which is a really ingenious way they did the deck. It's... But besides that, we also have our land base, which is one plains, two swamps, one mountain, four blight climb pathways, one temple of silence, four blight step pathways, four needle forge pathways, one temple of triumph, four survive the triumphs, and two fabled passages. That is the deck. Let us give it a shot on ladder. Oh, and since everything is one pip, we did throw in Jaginfa, which, yet again, if it gets buffed up by Showdown of the Scalds, it can easily crew the plow. Also, as well as being able to essentially add mana to cast any of our spells, or even, like, cast a typical Cosmic Imposter. Also, keep in mind, the plow can also be used to actually ramp into Tybalt, as well as if we are exiling cards with Tybalt, well, the Plow mana can actually be used to cast the spells that we exile with Tybalt. So, eh, keep that in mind. Nevertheless, we're going to show a few games, one best of one, as well as one best of three, and then have a wrap-up of the deck. So, with that in mind, let us give a shot at Mardu Plow. Shall we? Well, once I get the list... Ah, there we go. Ba Let's give it a shot. Why not? Oh, 
Okay, now, one thing to keep in mind, I'm actually in Mythic at the moment, so... It'll be very fascinating to see how this deck does in Mythic Ladder, so... We're about to find out. Okay, so we're going against this opponent. Let's see what shenanigans they were providing. This is an interesting hand. Hmm, we don't have the Plow, but we do have, theoretically, a turn one play if they're an aggro deck. We got Volky, we got Egon. I'm tempted the Mulligan just to get the gimmick of the Plow, but I think for this game, let's keep it as is. Want to play also, so it helps us be able to play a land this turn and just essentially see what our opponent's doing. Okay, Temple of Epiphany. That usually tells me that there could be potentially the combo deck. Okay, so if they're the combo deck, what do we want? We definitely want... We definitely want the black mana right off the bat for Kroza once we draw into it, but I think I'm going to play Valky here and try to hate out whatever they have here. They could be just playing Giants. Oh no, they're just playing Tempo. Okay. So the plane is a Tempo. What would be the best card to hate out? Technically it would be the Sprite Dragon, so that then they just have the Brazen Borrower here, which I think that's the play here. They might also just shock it, so... Probably realistically, they're probably going to shock Volky. Or just cast their second one that they draw. Okay. Let's take a look at the removal they have. They have the bounce. They have Shadow Skull Smatching. Gotta keep that in mind. They have Crash Fruit. So, if they draw into an untapped mana source, they could just shock slash also that. I think here I'm actually going to play this as red. Just attack in for two. And wait until they try to attack Arthlings, because if they try to buff this up to a 4, I might just Giant Killer it. If not, if it's just... See, they're just going to Shock here. Put a counter. And if they play the second one, which they do in that case, I think I'll just Shock now. We can take the one. Showdown's nice, but a little bit tricky. There is the plow there, which is nice to see. Okay, I think I'm going to Bone Crusher Giant here. If they want to bounce it, go right ahead. We don't mind having the second shot. And if they buff this up to like four or more, then we can just Giant Killer it. Okay, so they're going slow and steady in this case. Hmm. Hmm. There's an argument of playing Redon here, but playing Valkmira to reduce the damage by one, and if they ever target us with a shock or anything, they have to pay one more mana, so... I think that's the play. Sweden. That way, then, it makes their Brazen Borrowers cost free mana to bounce some... Well, not free mana to bounce stuff, etc., etc. Okay, interesting. Mm. Gonna get the white here. Going to get the plow out now. Or at least try to get it out, presuming our opponent doesn't negate here. Which might be good if they negate this, because then they will buff up this, and then if they buff up that, we can then essentially kill it with a uh, giant killer.
Wait for that resolve. Bye bye to this. Now, if we can get like a Kroza or something. We could also just play Egon, actually, and then just crew. Hey, the Royal Scions! Nice. They're probably going to plus it and just swing in for five, I'm guessing. Well, if our opponent doesn't have an unsummon, we should have this game. Because what we do here is we play Egon, God of Death. Mighty Ox to help crew our plow. So then we clue off Prowl. Swing in for lethal. Fadoo! Splint around it to the pepperoni. 87% <laughs> mythic. Nice. <laughs> okay, we'll play. That game came. That game. Blah. That game went a lot quicker than I thought, so I think we can play one more in standard rank best of one, and then we're going to play one best of three match. That is one fun thing about this deck, is the games are pretty quick with this deck, which is nice. Well, presuming you're not going against any Yorion Dirtly decks, at the very least. Sometimes it's a little concerning when it takes long like this, because that sometimes means you can go against a higher ranked opponent, but... Or the opponent just automatically conceded? Or just draw. Sometimes that happens, it's kind of like a weird little glitch, but... Heck. Let's actually play an actual game and then we can get to a best of three match. We're going to get Samuel Gunter. Okay, this should be fun. Okay, so let's see here. We got our Krotza, we got our Plow. The only thing we don't have is any black mana, and we're going to get to Yorion deck. Oh, goody! Should we risk it for the biscuit? Nah, why not? So, we're going to play this on red. We're probably going to play this on the Pillar Verge pathway, probably. Okay, so potentially Sultai could also be... Ooh, nice! Okay. So, we're just going to make our opponent presume we're... Boros of some sort. We're going to play that. Play the plow. So yeah, this is definitely the Soul Tide deck. So, a tip when playing this deck. You do have to go full control on this. So, full control. Especially if you're doing the Kroza trick here. So, we're going to play Kroza. And then, while this is on the stack, we crew the plow. Make our opponent discard a card of their choice. Okay, Elspeth's Nightmare. Nice. So now we're going to swing in. Get some mana... And we're just going to use that for Jaginfa. Upon Postal Fletching, maybe I should have played this on the Needle Forge pathway so I could have played Showdown of Scalds, but nah, you live, you learn. 
So let's see what our opponent plays here now. Knowing these ultimatum lists, they usually like to play a Cultivate. It looks like they're holding up counter magic, though, so we gotta keep that in mind. Well, let's see if they want to counter a second Kroza. I guess they didn't have the counter magic. Anyway, they could have removal up, though, so we gotta keep that in mind. Do they have the Heartless Act? They're thinking about it. Oh, they decide to eliminate. Okay, makes sense. Well, we do make them remove a card. Negate. Okay. With this, I think I'm gonna get a swamp. And we have a choice here. I do think I wanna play the bulky here. Just make sure they don't have any creatures. You usually would want to save this when they try to put this into their hand, but hey, they had a Yorion in hand, so we'll take that. Now, it's probably going to get Heartless Act or Extinction Event, but uh, at least we got that out of their hand. Though they are kind of having a bit of an awkward hand at the moment because, okay, so they had the second Eliminate. Gotcha. They're not really drawing any of the things that they would want to quote-unquote bounce. With this one, I think I'm going to play this. Puts cards in our graveyard, which is nice. We can mill a Vulk. We can exile Vulky, make a zombie. Put this on red. That way, then, we can have Krotza ready to get, go online. We could also play Showdown and Skulls here. We have choices. Okay, they had the Binding. Did it strike? Interesting. Ooh! I think this is actually the play here. Because we exile their binding, they can't ramp, which then... Because you want to prevent the Soul Tide Ultimatum deck from ramping as much as you can. So it's kind of nice we actually pulled that. Now, we got to keep in mind our opponent has Heartless Act online, and they know that. So I think what I'm going to do here is actually play the Jakinfa here. Plus sit on this and tell the opponent, hey, you're going to Heartless Act this? There we go. We got the Heartless Act out of their hand. I'm going to play this as a tap plan. Swing in for two. So now, presuming they don't draw into another removal, we can play Kroza plus Kroza and be nice. So yeah, we're just going to do just that. One, two, three, four, five. Make our opponent discard. Then the gate, that's fair. And do we ever just XL the Yorion? There's pros and cons to this approach. Pros. Technically, if we plus one on this, then what we can do, essentially, is just when they try to inevitably XL it, we will bounce to our hand and then add additional discard. We could also just XL this. I think the better play here is actually just to plus this, though. And then I'm just going to play the Throne of Death here so we can fuel more cards into our graveyard. Because chances are what our opponent's going to do here, Extinction Event, name even. This will bounce into our hand. We get a Spirit Token out of it, which is nice. Because then we can block this, essentially. There we go. And, well, I think this is where we play Showdown the Skulls. That way we can get an additional land played and stuff like that, essentially. So, I'm going to scry. 
That's second Bone Crusher. I think we just go into the aggro now. And theoretically, we should just be able to Kroza, Stomp, Stomp, and win? Well, in theory. Because all we do here is stomp. Put a counter on this. Put a counter. See if our opponent has spot removal. They did not. <laughs> Splendor run it to the pepperoni. And still 87%. Hmm. I wonder if it was because of the draw. I wonder if it was. Well, nevertheless. Now time to try this deck out in best of three. So, let's give it a shot, shall we? Traditional standard rank. Select the Mardu Plow. And let's get going. Ooh, we're getting against Haru. Splint around to the pepperoni. Okay. So, we're going to be on the play. Nice hand, very nice hand. We don't have the Plow, unfortunately, but we do have Kroza, we do have Egon, we have Terramet, Showdown of the Scalds, we're keeping this. Our opponent's playing a 53 card, or a 60 card deck, so no Yurion shenanigans. Well, in theory. They could also just be playing Yorion and Blink kind of scenario. But we don't know until we see their first land, so to speak. Okay, we're going to play the Trial and pass the turn. So seeing the Shelter makes me think of Mono White, potentially. So we're just going to make their hand just a little bit... Uh, not the best, dare we say. Plus, it allows us to get more information. Oh, is this the, uh... Is this, uh, Naya Thrain? Uh, Naya Thleen. I wonder if this is Naya Thleen. 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 Yeah. Brain fart on pronunciations today. <laughs> but I wonder if this... This looks like a Thleen deck. Okay, so we're just going to mill some cards into our graveyard... We'll exile Bone Crusher, make ourselves a zombie friend. If they have the Bone Crusher, they have the Bone Crusher. So let's see here. The Plain Kazu's Fury. Fury. Fascinating. I guess we'll take out another Bone Crusher. And here, I think we play Showdown of the Skulls. Just to draw some more cards, technically speaking. Flash also, it helps buff up our zombies. Especially if we want to uh, crew it with the plow. So we're going to swing in for two. They might shock or sh or stomp. Do they do that? That they do. Okay, one stomp out of the way. And they play their bone crusher. Okay, so we're just going to have that, gain a life. I don't mind milling that land if we want to play this. So, okay, so first things first, we play Plow. And then we have a choice of playing the Bone Crusher here. It's good, but it's not amazing. So I think the better play here is actually to make their hand go down just a a little bit. And then we'll play this. We're going to play Egon's Throne of Death. And ask our opponent if they want to take five. Yeah. They want to take five.
Okay, there's the giant killer. There's the giant killer played. Swing in for four. Makes sense. Very well. In that case. Two, three, four, five. And... Okay, in that case, we're going to play this on the red side, and just play another showdown on the Skulls. And put a counter on, since we have our little 4-3 here, we're going to put it on the plow. <laughs> and we could just play Egon God of Death just to put a counter on Kroza. But if they remove it, there's only three cards in the graveyard. It's better that we hold on this just in case if we want to crew with the plow. So now the question is, do they have giant killer number two? So this is definitely Naya Adventures is pretty much the hunch I'm getting here. With a little bit of gold span dragon because uh, good card. Okay, so what they're probably going to do... Well, no, they don't have... Well, they do have the mana, technically, with the treasure. Are they going to tap down Kroza? That is the question of the day. Hmm. This is where we go to the point of... We have to ask, do they have a protection spell? Because if they don't, we could just uh, play Tybalt here, exile it. I'm going to go to combat and see what our opponent does. I want them to use the mana. There we go. That's what we want. And then what we're going to do is play this. Play Tybalt. And bye-bye to Dragon. They had their own showdown, so let's see what they got here. So they can... Ooh, they could swing in for potentially 8. Or technically 10, 11. They could swing in for 11, technically. Or does the Countess go on first before the double of the power? They might also just double power the giant killer just to kill the Tybalt, so... I mean, it'd be interesting. Are they going to go full aggro, or are they going to go full defense here? That is the question of the day. That... And looks like their approach is going aggro with that just a little bit. Interesting. Do they have a two-cost spell? I think the play is simple here. We first play Blood Chiefs first. Do you have the protection spell? Okay, so then now we're going to plus two with this, see if we can get something else. One, two, three, four, five. Actually, oh, this is funny. Okay, watch this. We're going to play Econ God of Death. We're going to crew with Egon God of Death. And swing in with a... A 16-16 plow? 
<laughs> oh, I am grateful I highlighted that. <laughs> okay. So we know we're going against Naya Adventures. What do we play against Naya Adventures? We know they're playing Bone Crusher. We know they're playing the... We know they're playing stuff like Showdown of the Scalds. What do we put in? I think we do put in some Crush the Weeks. That makes sense. I think we go down Reduns because I don't think they work against this matchup. We definitely want some Revoke Existence as well as Duress to help us against essentially Showdown the Scalds. We'll go down one of these, we'll go down one of the Plows, and I think Kaya is still going to be relevant in this matchup, so I think one Elspeth Nightmare, though, is really nice. Question is, do we ever play the Crone War in this situation? Well, the, seeing that they're knowing that we are playing also Showdown the Scalds, they're probably running enchantment removal now, so that might not be the best play of the bunch. So, I think it's either the Immisturn Predator, or... I think I'm going to try this. this. Uh, no. <laughs> That's a no. That's also a no. Well, that's better. So we can toss this. I guess we can toss the Fable Passage and just hope for the best, prepare for the worst. Such reason our opponent gave the full, full grip here. I'm going to guess, yep, Love Shark Beast makes sense. We're gonna play this. Revoke Existence will be nice for later. No, we need lands. I think I'm gonna dress now. Boop. Let's just get that out of the way. Ah, good thinking on the Tomon script. Well, in that case... Mm, I think I'll just play the Revoke Existence now, forced in the sack. We can take Sits at the moment, but obviously next turn we're going to stomp whatever they try to play here. So yeah, they do that. We don't mind exiling one card from our graveyard. They're probably going to Fable Passage for planes, is my logical guess here. Well, okay. So. Yeah, we're kind of in one of those pickles, but we need to both. Hmm. Yeah, we need the blood cheese first. And stomp. And just hope they don't draw an innkeeper. And... Hmm. Yeah. Mm. Hmm. Four. Yeah, we can do this. Force our opponent to discard. Okay, that's interesting information there. So we know then they really like the card in their hand if they're willing to toss a gold span dragon. If it's an innkeeper, we're dead, but uh, let's see. 
they just top deck another gold span dragon. Is there any way we can get out of this? Answer is no, so I think we go to the next game. Okay, so we know they're running Bone Crushers, so... Actually, Shredded Sails would actually be a very good idea against this matchup, now coming to think of it. We know they have Graveyard Hate, so we're going to probably take out one Kroza. Keep the Kaya, since the Etzel effect is nice, and one Egon. Just go a little bit on... A little less on the Plow gimmick, and then just see if this is a better hand. Good news is one to play here, so that should help us out a lot with this deck. We're on the play. Okay. Sure. I think I do want to get this started, so... Instinctually, I want to play the Kroza here, but I think actually the more logical play here, believe it or not, is actually to play the Bone Crusher. Because then what we can do here is that we can have the Needle Verge pathway, so then we can play the Kroza, and then we can have essentially the uh, Shredded Sails online for a Tomon's Crypt. Well, there's Plow. That's a lot of innkeepers. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, so. Okay, instinctually, I kind of want to play Kroza here, but tearing my cards to dead has an argument here. Nah, we can swing in for 10 rather than the opposite, so I think we're going to do that. We're going to play Kroza on full control. Crew the Ox. Or plow. I always get those two mixed. <laughs> so we're gonna make our full sword opponent to discard. And then We'll cycle one of these, making our opponent presume, oh, we don't have the removal? Whether or not they will actually fall for that is another story. Okay. 
Okay. Is that... Okay, yeah, they're just going to create defenders now. Makes sense. Wait. I mean... Okay. Huh, we're actually interested with choice here. We could actually crew, 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 swing him for sits, and actually have Tybalt mana. Yeah, I actually like that play a lot more. So we're going to do that. And we'll take this, if you don't mind. And we'll go get this for planes just to be safe. And I think we got the game. I'm not going to be too cocky, but uh, we're in a good position. Goldspan, okay. Okay, it looks like they're in the potential just blockers. Yeah, they look like they're just in the blockers mode. I mean, first, we see what we get here. Well, that works. <laughs> oh, one by their own giant killer with Tibble. Awesome sauce. <laughs> Woo! Whew, now that was fun. And we even got a few packs out of it, and Cole the Forge Master. Nice. Anyway, that is Mardu Palau. I do want to thank uh, Rats. I do want to thank him for actually allowing me to play this list. This list is actually so fun. I will provide a link for his stream down below, as well as a link to the deck. I hope you all have a lovely day. This is LevDev, signing out. Bada beep! Bada boo!